I'm live now, so let's not elaborate any more on that conversation. Hello, 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 hello. All right, welcome back, guys. It is Natalie May here, ready to do another quick live Facebook with you. Just going to bring this up on my screen, make sure I'm in the right spot. Go. All right. Today, as part of the Great International Craft Show, we are bringing live mini classes to you free of charge Saturday, Friday, and Saturday. Yesterday, Friday, and Saturday. Yesterday, today, and Saturday. Um, that was harder than it needed to be. Uh, we have got a fantastic special for you, which are online only. Uh, specials, so you can get 15% off of stencils, dyes, Vicky Bouton products and Tim Holtz products online at nataliemay.com.au. That does exclude Vicky Bouton events, which there are still some spots in. It also excludes the Vicky Bouton kits. Uh, we have got quite a few little bits and pieces in here in the way of stencils and dies. We've got really good collection, something for everyone. Jump online to nataliemay.com.au and we can make that happen for you. Now, let's get straight into it. Back in May, we had our fabulous retreat here in Adelaide, our creative escape retreat. Tickets have just gone on sale for that at the moment, so you can jump online and book that. It is a four or three day event in Harndorf in the Adelaide Hills. Uh, it's $520, it includes all your accommodation. There will be a guest teacher, which we're just finalizing at the moment, uh, but there are still spots available, which is really, really fun. And I taught a class there this year, and I taught this little project where we made our own little DIY journal and covered it. Now, I just thought that I would show you how to do one yourself. So these are a little elastic bound journal that you can decorate yourself. The kit comes with the pages. You just need to put it all together. So the kit is $13.95 and this is what it looks like. Let's just take it out of the packet. So this is just something that I have designed and I had a particular problem that I needed to solve and that is I wanted to create an album uh, and I wanted it to be a certain size and I wanted to be able to build on it. So I wanted to be able to add extra pages. So I had this custom made. Now, there are lots of ways that you can bind this album. I'm going to show you two ways today to do it um, that are quick and simple and very, very effective. So I'm going to do show you one way on this side and then I'll turn it over and show you a, another alternative on the other side. Right, so the kit comes with two pieces of uh, what we call box board, cardstock, chipboard, and a spine piece here with three holes in it for your guide for where your elastic is going to go. Now, I'm gonna show you the easy way of doing it, and that is to invest in some of this paper tape. What you lost? I know I've lost my knife again. Oh. Here's one she prepared earlier. All right, so what this paper tape is, it's an American product. We bring it out from the States. And it is a binding tape for a paper tape to do walling with. Uh, so it is actually quite strong. So it has an adhesive back on it <laughs> to do walling with. What is, what's that called? Jiprock. Jiprock. So you peel off the back like that and now it is sticky so what i do is i'm going to lay this down and i'm just going to pop it here like that 
Now, you do need to leave a... <laughs> You do need to leave a little gap in between. So I will leave about that much in between. And I'm not worried that I'm covering my holes because I can I can drill those again. Girls, she mines out the gutter. And then I need to do the same thing on this side. <laughs> so I'm working with amateurs here. God. So we sell this by the meter. If you were to, if you were to Google uh, paper tape, I think it's called, on the website, search for paper tape on our on nataliemay.com.au, you can purchase a meter of this. It's very very awesome. So you got to peel off that sticky back, and let's repeat. So a couple of things are going to happen here. It's going to give me a, I'm going to put that one on first. It's going to give me extra strength on my spine, leaving a gap there, like that. And I can turn it over and really rub that through. So now it's going to turn nicely, fold nicely, okay? And I can cover this in pattern paper, which I'm going to do today. So that's one way of doing it. And then I can just cut off these edges bits, but I'm just gonna fold them up just for argument's sake today. Now, if you don't have any of this fancy tape, which is extremely inexpensive, you can do it another way. This is a way that uh, we did it in class on the day uh, when we taught in, in the, at the retreat. I use a thick double-sided tape. So a thick double-sided tape straight down that spine is another way of making sure that you secure, give it a nice strong edge. So thick double-sided tape and then what I do is I peel it off, peel the backing off. And go again but this time I just do a little overlap on that side peel that off hello ladies and I reinforce it this way I will then put some pattern paper over this gap and and that's going to, once I put some pattern paper on there and reinforce it it'll hold beautifully so let's do that let me find some pattern paper right I've got everything here ready except for a trimmer naturally now I've just pulled some I have gone to my paper, my collection of papers that I never want to throw out because I really love them. You know how you've got, everyone's got those. And I've got this paper which I have had for a very, very long time. And I'm just cutting a piece about that wide. So it's just an old, old, old paper that I need to part with. And then I'm going to pop it in here. You know what? I nailed that. Cut it off. So I'm going to do this with her scissors. And then what happens is one at a time, I'm just going to gently fold it in. So I like to use a paper that's not, it's kind of, 
it's not super thick, but it's got a nice amount of movement to it. Um, and then that has given it there. So I still do actually need to do this side because that's not sticky. So I'm going to hold on to that star paper and I'll put some in the middle in a second. All right. Now, what do I do with it from here? Couple of things I can do with it. Before I go any further, I wanna grab a hole punchy thing, a pokey tool, and I want to, because I can still see my holes here, just poke through where my holes are, just as a little guide. I have to apologize, my internet's turned to crap. Let me. All right, I have to apologize. Yes, my internet turned to crap, so I've just gone to data and hopefully we have no problems. We've had internet problems here all day. Right, can you see me now? Have I frozen? Tasha, can you see if I've frozen, please? Hey? Delay. My computer's frozen. Can you see me? Yeah. Oh, I'm moving? Yeah. So it's just my computer I can't see. Oh, Facebook. Sorry, ladies. Right, I think we're back. Okay. So what I want to do now, I've, I've reinforced that spine. I want to, now I've got some patterned paper. Now this journal size, this is not going to fit across a 12 by 12, right? Uh, again, an old pattern paper of no particular, it's a company that's not even around anymore. So I think I'm just gonna put, I don't know, a flower maybe, and I'm gonna put some rub-ons on this in a minute actually. So I might use, I might use that side. Okay, this little bit here, as you can see across the bottom, I haven't exactly tidied that up. What I like to do is leave it a little bit rough, then I can come back, I'll trim it off a bit more, and I come back with a nail file and tidy that up. Okay. Double-sided tape on here, so I'm going to need to use it and tape it as two separate pieces. So for me, I use double-sided tape. It doesn't matter what brand, as long as it's not from a cheap shop, everybody's happy. And I'm going to put it over that spine and I'm reinforcing, I'm reinforcing that, um, that fold there. Over time, that fold may deteriorate a little. Of course it will, it's made of paper. It's not meant to last forever. You can also use, um, if you happen to have in your stash some Dina Wakeley canvas tape or you have a thicker, heavier book binding tape, that will work. Um, we don't have any of the canvas tape in stock at the moment. Right, let's make a decision here. Am I gonna use that side? I might put that in the middle and put that on the front. All right, my chair is catching on something on the floor. Sorry, guys. Right, this after I should have had a glass of wine with lunch, I reckon. My, this afternoon's Facebook's just not going uh, to plan. Let's reset and start again. Let's not do that. I'm just going to pop another bit here. And I can't see your comments now because my computer screen changed. All right, so what I'm going to do is grab a... There we go. I'm going to put it... I'm going to put a different piece down the middle for strength. 
So I'm going to take this and line it up about here. And I put it on a little bit at a time, kind of, so then I don't completely mess it up. Peel off my tape, rub it down, make sure that I'm getting right into that spine. So using up some of those patterned papers that you've been saving at home in your stash, kind of like I'm doing now, is this is time to use them. Okay, use them, stop right saving them for a rainy day. Perfect. Except for that whacking the camera bit that I just did. Right, now I'm just going to come in here. Gentle, gentle, gentle flex. So it's got that nice bit of strength in the middle there now. I just need to tidy up my edges. So I have to apologise ladies, I cannot see if you have any questions. My computer in here and my internet has just died in the pants. Uh, so just feel free to say nice things about me because I can't hear it or see it. <laughs> Alright, just trimming that off. Kasha will keep an eye on if there's any questions. She's keeping an eye, fabulous. Thank you. All right, there we go. So just trimming that down, but just, you know, making sure that your spine, this area here, this is what this is going to take most of the, most of the uh, strength. You need most of the strength there. Okay, especially if it's going to be a little mini album that you can put photos in. You can turn it into an art journal. You can do so many things with it. All right. Is that my front or my back? Haven't decided. I reckon that's the perfect size to go there. So let's tape up in here. Need to focus on this spine. Let's get that in there. The edge, right up to that edge to make sure that we don't have any stray bits. You can use gel medium to do this. I do find though that it comes in a bit damp. It takes too long. I do prefer to bring out the big guns, which is my expensive double-sided tape. This is the thick, heavy-duty stuff. Um, or you could use a, you know, a wider double-sided tape. Um, back in the day, you used to be able to use jack paper. Jack paper, I haven't seen in a very long time. I, I reckon I can order it in, um, but jack paper, of course, is a larger piece of double-sided tape, so you can get it as like an A4. Where's my spine radio? There we go. So now I'm going to take my second piece of patterned paper, and I'm going to go right up to that edge. And this is all about holding your tongue the right way. And I can't see my comments. Can you see my comments? Yeah. Can you squeeze past no me? No one's commenting. No one's commenting. Can someone comment? Somebody say something. Squeeze something out the way. Can't get through? <laughs> Not going to happen. All right. That was funny. It could go terribly. All right. Peeling that tape off. 
to expose that edge. And now I'm just going to roll it. And it's really hard to show this, but I'm going to roll and fold just to make sure that I'm getting a really nice touch. Now, if you had a thinner paper, you really wouldn't need to do this. But for whatever reason today, I've chosen the thickest paper out of my stash. Oh, look, you're all saying something now. Hello, Chrissy. Hello, Michelle. Sorry, I had a little internet issue. What did you miss? I am making a DIY journal from the Natalie May Scrapbooking Journal Kit. You will be able to go back and watch this again. Um, of course, it gets saved to our... Oops, hang on. It gets saved to our Facebook page and I will also, when I get home tonight, I will upload it to YouTube and you'll be able to go back and watch it again. But this is one of our, our DIY journal kits that are surprisingly easy to make and really effective. Mind you, I'm not making this look easy for some reason. Right, covered in front and back with paper from my stash that I have been saving for a rainy day. So we're gonna trim this off now. You know that paper? Because you've all got that paper that you've been saving for a rainy day. Well, guess what guys, it's raining. Start using the paper or your family are gonna be decorating your coffin in it. And you all know what I'm talking about. Um, Cheryl Pentland is asking a question about the double-sided tape. I think we have one roll of that heavy-duty double-sided tape left. Um, it is, and I do have to do a, another order of double-sided tape. That tape that I was using is the Altenew tape. It um, is very good and very pricey to go with. Okay, snippy, snip, snip. Right, done. So now I have my cover made. This up here is a little rough, but I'm gonna show you how to tidy that up in a moment. Um, yes, I could use the offcuts for artist trading cards, Linda. If I had time to do that, don't be ridiculous. All right, but what I am going to do, I've got this, I mean, the spine on here isn't too bad. I don't, I didn't um, completely mess that up. I could put another piece on and wrap it around as a decorative edge, do a punched border. That would look quite nice, um, but I'm not going to do that because ain't no one got time. But what I am going to quickly do is I feel the need to put this paper on the inside so where was that other off cut? Here we go. Oh, that's almost perfect. And that's almost perfect. So let's go like this. Covering the inside. So you can paint this. So in the class that we did here uh, in Adelaide at our retreat, we did a collaged page. So we used our um, Allison small collage paper on the front and uh, Sharon on the back and then we painted and stenciled in and around it and I used book paper, dictionary paper, to seal our spine, which on mine, because it's used for demo purposes, it actually has not held, which is at no surprise at all to anybody because it just didn't, love, it didn't last. Um, so that will work. So you can paint them. You just have to work out a couple of options to join it together. So it's quite a tapey process. This one, I'm going to do the inside, inside front cover. Now, I'm not at all worried here that my, my cutting is crooked because I'm going to use some washi tape as well. 
to cover that bit because that's a bit terrible. So let's be honest. Yeah, so Chrissy, that's that was part of our class. Chrissy just commented saying that they blend so well onto the cover. Um, yes, that was part of the class. So within the Natalie May scrapbooking uh, on the website, nataliemay.com.au, you can join one of our online classes and we can, and I go through how to, how to blend them into your backgrounds effortlessly. Ooh, FedEx guys just turned up, Kasha. Look at that. Um, sorry. So, yeah, we, we go through all of those fun techniques and in a lot more detail about how to blend them into your projects, all right, so that they look effortless. Sticking on here. So, yeah, Karen's just saying, um, I've got this the same paper. This paper I have had since forever and ever and ever, and I have about 40 sheets of it, I reckon, and it is some of my favourite paper days. Don't tell anyone. So I'm now just covering the inside of my journal. Then I will trim this off and we will finish it off. What's the FedEx guy got, I wonder? Okay, just need to turn this this way because there we go. Righty I turn it over, trim it off. So this is just the flip side of that piece of paper, and I'm going to just finish fix up my edges in a moment, and I'm going to add some embellishments to the front cover here. Uh, and oh, I can't do this back to front for some reason my hand won't allow me to cut this way but there we go no so this this paper brand was called seven dots and it was one out of Poland um, many 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 moons ago Radio. So the cutting bit is super rough. My trick for tidying up your edges, front and back, is to use a nail file. Ooh, to use a nail file. So a nail file, just by sanding the side of our chipboard backwards and forwards like this, will take off any excess. I've got it on an angle. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah. I've got it on an angle and it takes off and smooths out those edges. So paper goes absolutely everywhere. It's like a snowstorm in here, but that's okay. So I'm quickly just going to zhush around and do that. Front and back, and then I'll concentrate on my spine. And it gets rid of that freshly cut look and makes sure that it is blended into the background. So this technique does work with beautifully with patterned papers. When you're a bit like me and you didn't cut those absolutely perfect, it will work a treat. In the middle there. Right. Love it. That's worked fine. So I will actually finish that up with some washi tape down in that gap. Now you can decorate accordingly. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to add some rub-ons to my front cover. I've got these really, really lovely botanical rub-ons from Simple Stories. I had a wander around the shop earlier and these just are stunning. I really, really love these. So I thought, yes, uh, I thought that I would show you how easy it is to apply rub-ons. 
So if you are looking for this journal kit on the website, Kasha, could you pop the links in the cupboard? In the cupboard. Pop the links in the cupboard, Dal. What the freaking heck does that mean? Don't pop them in the cupboard. In the comments. So this is the DIY journal kit, and you'll probably find this in the products by Natalie May. All right, what I want to do is I want to create a little cluster of rub-ons on my front cover, and I'm going to focus them mostly down in this area. Rub-ons are really, really easy to use, uh, and, but there are a couple of wonderful little tricks with them. So they, they've come back into fashion really, really well. Um, they take them out of the packet and they have got a, a backing piece and then that top rub-on piece. Grab your scissors. Keep it all together, but grab your scissors and cut out what you need because they are super, they can be super sticky and they can be very unforgiving which means you can stick things on to your project that you don't actually mean to do. So for example, I am taking off that little bit because I don't want that bit. So I want to create a little bit of a layered cluster. Uh, I think I like this top piece here. 49 and Market have the most incredibly beautiful collections of rub-ons that they have bringing out, but they have been bringing out with every collection of late. And I can tell you what, they are just stunning. They come in 12 by 12 size. They also come in six by eight size. There's a great range. Uh, I'm gonna start with these ones. I'll lay that flat. So at this point, I can take it and peel it off, and I'm going to put it here. In the packet of rub-ons that I have already, oh, here we go, almost lost on my desk, is a ice cream stick. Um, and you just got to rub backwards and forwards over the top, and you're going to rub those on. Now, this is really, really good for adding on titles. Oh, actually, I've got one of the big, simple stories. No, I haven't. Big, what are they called? Um, packets of 49 and market ones open. So when I lift off this bit here, in my bookshelfy thing, the little pack of stuff that I took to retreat has got a packet of 12 by 12 rub-ons. And as I lift it up, and you can, instead of peeling it all off at once, you peel it off a little bit at a time, and then you can see any little bits that you missed. There we go. So that has just come off beautifully and just fits perfectly into my page. I love that. So let's go around, we're gonna add some more. Yes, I'm going to use that big one. We still got those. We still got those in stock, don't we? I just found it and put them in. Splendid. All right, I'm going to put this one down here. So I'm going to do a little zoom up, and I'll show you again. Let's have another go, guys. Right. So it's currently just stuck down on that little bit of plastic, and then we just spend a moment and we go around and we follow the image and we completely rub it on to our project. Remember letter set letters? Did everybody have those at school to do your projects? Architects use them all the time. Before we had, you know, computers and stuff. Right, from here, I'm gonna go lift, lift. Whoop, missed a bit here, gonna go back in there. Missed a bit here. Um, missed a bit on the... You'll soon, as you peel it off, you notice that these little bits that aren't rubbed all, down all the way. Top of the flower here is not rubbed on properly. 
Oh, 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 there we go. Just a bit there. Done, love it. All right, what else have I got here? I do love this big guy. Let's have a look here and see if I can put that big guy here. Of course I can. Of course I can. Cut it out. Highly recommend cutting them out because they can be a bit of a nightmare. Oh, this little bee, he has to come off. I'm going to pop him here. And I use my fingernails because I can do that too because I have acrylic nails. That's an easy way of doing it. And yes, you can layer it up. So this one, I'm going to go like that and like that. But I, want to go, I don't want to go high. I'm going to take the Hello Friend so it layers there and there. So can you see how easy Rublons are to use on a project? Quick, easy embellishment. Oh, that love heart. Oh, it's upside down now. Let's connect to it. Layer, layer. Just a bit here. Just running my paddle pop stick. Do they call them paddle pop sticks in America? Do they have paddle pops in America? Uh, yeah. I wonder what Street they. Is America. Hey? Streets is America. So, me calling it a paddle pop stick is not like a completely different weird. And see how it's all just lifting off? Nailed it. Okay, done, done. Uh, I do want to put something down there. What have I got? I have got a little, I have a little bloom, too small, too much rubbish. Let's go here. You can use half a rub on, you can use a whole rub on. But we're transferring it. That's so annoying. Okay, can I cover it up? Oh, bugger. So welcome to those of you just tuning in. Uh, it's Natalie May here and I'm showing you how to use rub-ons and make a DIY little journal album. So this is one of our Natalie May scrapbooking products and uh, it is a raw chipboard journal that you put together yourself. So this time I've got this little guy here and I'm going to pop it down here because I've covered that bit up. That bit's nice, but not really. And we can layer up a flower cluster. So this is an alternative to stamping. It's an alternative to sticking on paper embellishments. 
it is a wonderful little alternative for your project and I'm going to go I've got half a flower here I can use that here All right, what are these called? These are the 49 and Markham Market Spectrum Gardenia Rub-Ons. Sorry about the flicker, that would be the white lighting. And I can create my own wording title. Uh, let's go with... Friend, I'm gonna use the word friend. So I'm just going to, re again, remove it. So this is the 12 by 12, 49 and market rub-on sheet. Now, the trick here is that these have got some wonderful little splatters and you can choose to add them in or take them off. I'm cutting these arrows out, so I don't want those. But I also only want the word friend I don't want the S, so I have the ability to cut that off. And now I can stick this on. Come on. Apparently not. Peeling it off the back, and these have got a white base to them. These are quite a distressed finish. I'm going to overlap it. I need to make sure at this point that it is straight. I just noticed my camera is not straight. Apologies. I probably just made that worse, didn't I? All right, I'm going to start up here and work in a small circular motion to make sure that I get it all off. So I can ink the edges of this DIY journal, I can paint it, I can stamp it, I can add rub-ons, I could add collage papers, I could magazine images, book prints, pull out those pattern papers that you've been saving for a rainy day, you know the ones I am talking about. Uh, you can use anything that you like to cover these DIY journals. And at the low cost of, how much are they? $13.95. You can afford to make a couple for a friend. All right, let's peel this off. Slowly. Slowly. Nailed it. All right. Love it. I've got all these little random uh, rub-ons left floating around my desk that I cut off. And rather than just pop them into the bin, which will be the thing that I probably do next, I'm just going to add them to my project. And then I'm going to quickly show you how to add your elastic. And we are done. Done like a dinner. All right, not complicated at all, okay? I, I hope I didn't make that look too difficult, putting your page together, and look at those rub-ons. Man, that looks really good. I know, surprising. Okay, so we have done our little put it together journal. We, I can still feel where the holes are. What I do need to do is get myself a hole punch,
and a pair of tweezers. Hole punch. And my favouritest pair of tweezers. Now this is my crocodile that I have had for an awfully long time. And what I'm going to do is just punch. Delphine has just asked the question, do I need to seal the rub-ons? Um, I, I choose not to. Um, you could seal it in a with a collage medium or a gel medium perhaps. Depends on how long you want them to last, I guess. Um, I find no need to do it, but you know, that's a me thing. Personal preference. Right, you have some elastic in your kit as well. We are going to divide that into three. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. One moment. If you look away, get seasick. No, come on. Internet, do your thing. Yeah, or apparently we're still, no, there we go. Or we're staying there. So I divide this into three. Three even pieces. And cut it. Now you can use, if you have a thinner elastic at home, you could use that. Um, I then cut these into little pointy bits. And with my tweezers, push it through the hole. And you very patiently pull it out the other side. middle hole and it doesn't matter if you tie it off on this side or the other side I don't think it really matters it's up to you but you will need to stretch the elastic to tie it off because you do want it to be taut so sometimes An extra set of hands and I just tie any granny knot. So you do that three times, three holes and you have some heavy duty card here. This is a beautiful mixed media card stock folded in half. Slide it through, instant page, all right? So definitely the problem points or the key points, and you do that with, with all um, nine pages, uh, the key points are making sure that you've got a really firm bind here. And that's so important so that they are, so it's nice and strong. So you could use double-sided tape. You could also, like I said, invest in a roll of paper tape. This is the uh, paper tape that I use. So if you go back and watch this video, I did one side with the paper tape and the other side with normal double-sided tape. The paper tape is not a necessity, but it certainly has that extra little bit of strength to it. Um, and I think that you would certainly, you know, like to use that. Um, the, yeah, really quick and simple, easy to use. And you can build on it. You can add more pages. You've got all of this room here to work with. You can go a little bit more arty-farty and, you know, exactly the same project here, but look at the difference. Totally different. The inside here, you can see... Excuse me, you can see here that I painted the inside of mine here. You can't see the paper through here. Um, and then I, I started, you know, a little art journal page here. Uh, this has got very rude words on it, so I'm just going to cover that up. Um, but you can stamp, you can do gel press prints in this little journal. You could do lots and lots of lots of things. 
uh, perfect size to use the Tough Girls collage paper because it's a really nice little condensed size. So there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I will be back here at 3.30 to do a, another art journal page. Uh, if you have any queries or questions, just let us know. We can certainly help you out. But we've just created something surprisingly easy and really, really effective. And we've used pattern papers that we've got at home in our stash, using up the things that we have uh, available to us instead of saving them for a rainy day. But on the other hand, we do encourage you to buy all the things at the same time. <laughs> Jump online to nataliemay.com.au and I look forward to seeing you back here in an hour or so. Thanks, guys.